Hey folks, I've got a tachyon kit in front of me which I was about to open up and show you all what it looks like when you get one of these. Um, let's have a look what we got. This is caveat alert. This was dropped off at my place, so it's probably not set for shipping. It looks like it's been resealed. Oh, I can tell. It was rattling around earlier. If you get one of these to the mail, it'll be packed beautifully, trust me. Um, what is a tachyon kit? Um, it's basically all the accessories that we sell. I don't know whether it's every one of them, but it's predominantly the accessories that we sell along with the Kickstarter campaign. We are packaging these up and sending them internally as well as sending them out to alpha users. And some of the beta users will get some of the kits as well as we kind of push that out. Um, yeah, without further ado, maybe I'll look at it from the bottom. Um, I'm always, there we go. Less suspicious when you open it from the bottom. the screwdriver for opening up packages. Uh, bubble wrap and then a gratuitously amount of untapped product. Excellent. Let's pull things out in no order. What have we got here? Hmm. Actually, let's put them out in order. This is a debug board. Uh, sorry, debug board is here. Um, what is a debug board? It connects to a tachyon through these ribbon cables and it provides two serial ports that allows you to go and access the low level consoles and things on the device. You don't need one of these. All of that stuff's uh, available over USB, the internet, etc. Et but um, if you like tinkering, if you like like me, then you'll probably want one of these. And you can potter around with it. Um, you can also set settings on the device as well and things like that with it. It just makes it like, it makes it a bit more embedded -y, which I am a huge fan of. Um, another thing that comes with it, an accessory, an audio adapter. This thing's got two mounting holes and it sits across the Tachyon device. Um, why do we build an audio adapter? Well, we couldn't find a way of getting this beast on the board, um, partly because the module fits at the bottom of the board and we don't really have any through hole on it. And that kind of forced us into building a really inexpensive PCB. It's got audio in and out on it, built-in microphone. It's kind of cool. Um, what else do you get with the on kit? You get a multifunctional USB adapter if you ordered one. Um, I think this is a fairly cheap thing that we sell. Um, supports 100 watt USB PD through port, puts a USB PD input, um, most of all HDMI output. Um, somewhere on here, I think it's over here. I've got kind of one, of, I have thousands of these. If you ever want to start off like a, a museum of uh, forgotten uh, USB C adapters, come over to my place. This has got similar things on it. This one's got a USB, it's on a USB Ethernet adapter on it. I think it's a 1 gigabit Ethernet adapter. That's why I've been using this one recently, because it's super fun. But HDMI out on it as well. Uh, we'll do a video of that shortly. Um, this is a little less interesting. It's a USB-C to USB-C cable. True fact, it's a 3.2 Gen 1 cable. This has also got one of those cables built into it, but it doesn't go very far. Um, why do you need one of these? If you're connecting it to a monitor um, or a power brick of some sort, um, you need to be able to provide the 100 watts provided. It's got a little chip inside it called an e-marker chip. Um, oh yeah, look, built-in e-marker chips for safe charging. It doesn't allow you to go over three amps without one of these little chips inside it. And it also has the bus speed to be able to get up to 4K30 on the output. It says 4K60. Our board only does 4K30. Probably that's why that one there says 4K30, because that's what the standard does. Um, and you have to go up to a new USB technology to get faster. Uh, battery, cool. Uh, three cell battery, got a middle pin on it for the, or yellow pin on it for the battery charge voltage, which is called a GPS antenna. So, a little big. Um, why is it big? Because it's really amazing. So that's a great way. It picks up GPS straight away in the house. Um, R1, R2, R5's global board, um, extremely powerful. And it's a little nozzle on the tachyon, which I guess you haven't got to yet, but how do I open this thing? What is this box here? USB PD. This is a temporary one. Um, I haven't opened this one because I never use USB P adapters when I have a computer that just outputs it. And last of all, we've got a tachyon board. Um, familiar looking box there for those in the single board computer space. A damage box as well. <coughs> Nobody definitely has attempted to brute force this open. Um, better on the stickiness next time around. What have we got in here? Uh, we've got a tachyon, hero of the hour. 
Um, let's go over the Tachyon briefly. Uh, Built-in Salio antenna, uh, CSI display port, combo DSI CSI, um, three pin battery charging port, USB 2 host port, a stick doesn't stick out for case compatibility, super interesting. Let me get that back to uh, how the focus works on this thing. There we go. USB 3.1 port, audio port, the button, you know, the single button that everybody has, LED, PCIe Gen 3 one lane. I think this is the second free lane inside it. So only wants to tell us that would be a great idea to build a non-compatible port. I've been wondering that for quite a while. SD card, debug adapter. Ah, sorry. Sorry for the focus people. You can kind of see what I'm putting. Debug adapter, SD card. Um, then we've got a quick adapter here. This is going away. That was just to be there to select some voltages, but it's gone. GPS antenna down here. The 40 pin header. And then if I flick over, dun, 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 the Takeo module itself. So, you know, if any you know anything about particle, um, in fact, anything around RF, um, putting a screen on top of it is kind of the first thing you do. Um, and this is no, no exception here. Uh, I've got a 5G sub 6 gigahertz radio inside it. For the cellular side, it's got a sub 6 gigahertz Wi Fi radio inside it. That is a lot of spare electrons that wish to go out in unusual directions. So, this is a great shield for it. Um, one of the challenges with this, of course, um, clearance wise, it's pretty good. Like, you can fit most cases into it. There's only a few of them that touch the bottom, but um, you can't put much through hole on it. So, all of this at the top of it designed for surface mount, including the 40 pin header, if you look carefully, it's another surface mount. Uh, very similar to how Raspberry Pi 5 did it, although it's probably not the same technology. Um, it's super cool though. A uh, huge fan of, of the innovations they're putting on their board. Little, here's a little cool chip down here. If you can see that, maybe you have to get your board and have a look at it. It is a diplexer chip. It combines different RF bands together so that we can have reduced bands on here and switches them dynamically. Um, Great, that's the board. Um, maybe I will just show you, you pull the battery in. Normally this is in the case. People, there we go. Plug it in, immediately get a red light. It's in standby mode. Press the button, starts booting. Um, what do I expect to see on the boot side? I don't expect to sneeze. <sighs> there we go, didn't actually sneeze. Um, it's kind of booting up. There's an activity light here, which is controllable, he said by the kernel. I wonder whether there's a zoom in here. Wow, look at that. So cool. Um, this LED here is just a proc entries out of kernel. You can tell it what to do. I think it uses the same activity light driver the Raspberry Pi does. Um, currently beats at two hertz when it boots up. And then when it starts blinking randomly, it's set to use a disk and stuff. That means it's booted. You can also tell it's booted because this LED was glowing green and now it is glowing is that that's cyan i think so what does that mean it means it connected to the wi-fi connected to particles cloud and is ready to chooch um if it glows i think cyan is is cyan the cellular or the he says losing focus again due to attention deficit issues um it glows purple when it's on wi-fi and cyan when it's on cellular so you can kind of see how it's connected um if you go through our setup process you'll be prompted to add in the credentials already for that board um, so that it immediately joins the Wi-Fi. Um, that's a headless setup experience to start with. There's a desktop one that we'll follow on with very shortly, which we started out with, but um, somehow headless had the allure of the unknown and we did that first. These stickers have been replaced with a beautiful gold effect just to give it a bit of bling bling. Same goes at the bottom. The blue was a lovely idea, but um, um, I think it clashes a little bit too much. So we're just going to go with a more kind of 70s brownie gold. Um, that's it, kind of boots up. You can intercept these button presses if you want to do an application. I used to have mine set to turn the Wi-Fi hotspot on so I could use the built-in cellular antenna. Um, that's about it. Um, you can press it once and it puts it into low power mode but it doesn't actually do anything unless you're plugged into a display. It'll turn the display off and do such. Um, it's cool, that was the unboxing video. Um, as you can see, it just booted up and ran, connected to a cloud. Uh, I could have shown you that demo working, but um, I did not because this is an unboxing video. There wasn't much left in the box. I'm guessing broken container. You see, the amount of Raspberry Pi boxes I had broken is many. Um, great. Hopefully that was illustrative. Thank folks. 
Thank you ever so much if you were so interested in that. Um, let me zoom out. Whoa, that's the autofocus. Never give me controls of a camera. That's it for me. Bye for now. Oh, by the way, on the studio protocol, pleasure to meet you all. Bye. And my name's Nick. Yeah.